what a wild quarter it has been. Um, the last time we were here, we had um, an interesting guest, Cindy Faber, from Thinkorswim. And what we were covering was, of course, some seasonalities and the seasonality tool on TOS. And one of the things, if you guys remember, um, on that presentation, which was recorded, and I think you can find the link, uh, we'll probably include that with um, this as it is being recorded, uh, was the seasonality in the IWM, the Russell, right? I don't know if you guys remember that far back. It's kind of tough to remember things. I'm going to change it to my favorite markup color, and then we'll uh, start from them. The Russell, it did not change the color once again. So we'll do it one more time. I... W M, the Russell, the Russell, the I W M. We were looking for a seasonal upturn in the small cap sector. If you guys remember that, um, interesting enough. If you follow my tweets, and uh, what we also put out is this little thing we we've been doing for several years now. Actually, I can't believe it's been. I can say that word several years uh, for our trading community in our own trading room. I put out for, it, don't get me wrong, it's selfish reasons. I do it for myself, really. Um, a weekly thought process. I go through my scans, uh, which I'm going to share with you how to do some um, uh, heavy lifting here with Thinkorswim using their scan feature today. That's really what we're going to basically get into. Um, and also kind of pick up of what we left off with when we were here with uh, Cindy. Um, Ralph, if you don't have sound, you might have a problem because everyone else has sound. May I suggest you probably, if you don't have sound, then you're not going to hear the suggestion, which is close out some of your browsers. You have too many things open, um, but everyone has sound. And Judy, yes, you'll, everyone should get a, a link to the recording. We've never held back, so we're going we're gonna to get that out to you. Okay? As most of you know, we put out some quality uh, research analysis for everybody. Uh, cutting, I don't want to say cutting edge, but I definitely say for, forefront in, in the field of technical analysis. Um, a couple things, uh, we'll get through some house cleaning here first and foremost. Um, this is a uh, dis risk disclosure, which, you know, by law we need to present to everyone to know that uh, trading is risky and that the information presented today is, of course, education in nature. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Um, ironic, there was a study by uh, Bloomberg that came out and it was posted on MarketWatch circulating within the APTA community as well as the MPA. Um, what this stated was Bloomberg did a study on, I think the number was 1,500, it could be 1,400, it might be 1,600, regardless. They did a lot of, of uh, uh, study on numerous over a thousand, let's leave it at that number, over a thousand recommendations both from technicians and fundamentalists. And what they found was that actual the technicians were more accurate within a year than the fundamental analysts that came on. And that was a study by Bloomberg. I'm sure that can be found. I know I can find it. It's in my email. So um, it, it was kind of a, an interesting thing. It, it also validates what the heck technical analysis is all about. And, and that how we can utilize it to help manifest some not just uh, defined risk strategies, but also to find out where we might find better opportunities ahead. And one of my favorite uh, tools is, of course, candlestick and pivot point analysis, which I might say this really, this book right here, really popularized pivot point analysis. I mean, not many people, it was a lost art, and we... Uh, introduced this to the world and all of a sudden a lot of educators, a lot of other people say, hey, yeah, I kind of used to use that. And, you know, we combined using uh, a few techniques of certain candle patterns. Now, I know there's over 70 different patterns and everyone uh, studies candlesticks. I only focused on a few. And, and I think the few that I focus in on, we've uh, generated quite a, a, a core uh, position around and, and, and scanning features, which has just been absolutely dynamic. And, you know, it's ironic, and I want to share this, not to brag, but just to point out that if something is valid, it should work through through time. And the, the funny thing is, is over 10 years ago, when a decade ago, when that book came out, Candlestick and Pivot Point Trading Triggers, when it came out, we introduced 
several concepts. One was called the uh, HCD, we call it the high closed doji. One was called the LCD, the low closed doji. And the other concept in the back of the book was using stops and points of breakout methods was called my last conditional change, LCC. Um, a very powerful tool to identify um, you know, resistance support levels based on certain uh, candles. So that book was really a, a, a dynamic book in, in its essence. And you know, folks, which was really cool, we use the scans that we, we created based on what was in that book and, and look for opportunities even in today's market environment. Now, um, a few years ago, namely three, this book came out, which really launched a, a, a lot more about stocks, by the way, mastering the stock market. This talked about things like uh, volume indicators, like OBV. It talked about the breadth indicators, stuff that I'm going to share with you today, because it really is instrumental in, in, and I think, cutting edge in the sense that not a lot of people knew that they could use this to give them an edge in the marketplace. And I'm sure you, you guys realize that we get this circulating, gyrating type of sector rotation. And today, uh, it's not just a sector rotation um, that markets they go in and out of and, and causing markets to go up and down, but we go through uh, looking at, um, like today's trade, for example, uh, and let's just tee this up for you real quick, the Russell. I mean, when you look at the Russell up over 3% today, you know, the news is talking about, well, Janet Yellen didn't really have a big effect on the market because the S&Ps wasn't, you know, didn't have a, a really big move. And if we take a look at the S&P futures, you know, they, you know, they did rally, but up 1%. So, you know, when you compare that to the uh, ETF that we are going to be uh, going through one again, once again, the Russell itself, the IWM, up darn near 3%, 2.78%. So the point that I'm trying to make is that certain times you can, your money will work better knowing what sectors or relative indexes to be in at certain times of A, the year, or uh, what, what sectors are influencing those indexes, right? And I think that's really important so that we can get more bang for our buck. Um, that, I think, is, is really keen. And, you know, the last time we were here, uh, you know, I'm just going to go over here, and first and foremost, we're gonna, we've got a blank chart for several different reasons. I have a blank chart because I'm going to walk you through several things that we didn't get through last week, and, and, or not last week, back on, was it, what, March 8th, I think? Uh, I could be wrong on that. Maybe it was the 5th. It was the first week of March uh, that we were here. So uh, at, at the very least, it was three weeks ago. Um, just a curiosity, I don't want to get this thing flooded with hands raised, but, and I probably will, but, I mean, how many people were here uh, at that last session that we covered on seasonality? I won't have a way of gauging this, but uh, I, I guess if I just get a whole flood of, you know, everyone going just why, if I get a whole bunch of whys, then I know that a lot of people were here, and, and, and you notice how we went through the seasonality. And, and um, I'm going to review that real quickly, and then I'm going to combine my, my favorite indicators, and then kind of go through how we can utilize other tools in com combination with this, and then I'm going to lay on a think script uh, code for you guys, which we didn't announce, uh, you know, in the email, but I'm just going to give it out to you guys in just a few minutes here, uh, which I think might be something that if you're not using, uh, it might be helpful for you, uh, and, and then we'll, we'll carry on. So there were a few people that were at this event um, that we conducted back, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the, uh, gosh, I don't even remember. First, second week of March, three weeks ago, let's call it. So, any event, if you go up here to uh, style, uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to chart mode. And it, right now, I'm on standard. And if you notice, you got monkey bars, monkey bars expanded, seasonality. All right, fairly new tool. Now, if we go um, and to the setting, chart settings here what we can do is go and click on appearance. 
Why am I going to do that? I'm going to click on appearance and I'm going to display average or I'm going to select yearly. And then I'm going to hit apply and OK. Now, what do I have here is only, as you can, as you can see up at the top, I've got, you see 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, can hardly see it, so we've got to change that color, and then 16. So what did I do? Well, what I did was I click on style, and I only have a five-year daily chart. If I'm going to look at seasonality, I want to go back a little more than just, say, five years. Maybe I'll go 15 to 20 years, right? Life of history, if I go 20 years daily, now I'm going to fill in the blank, and it will list every single year independently of what the trend status is typically during this time frame. From early March, when you and I were last here, okay, from early March, um, actually I think it was uh, March 8th, it was a Tuesday, March 8th. Um, I think we, by the time we got the thing compressed, sent out, and emails, uh, it was the uh, second week of March. So, um, and then again, don't quote me on that. I just had a birthday. I'm one year older, you know, so we'll, we'll move on. Anyway, from this point in time, when we look at the first week of March, what we were trying to talk about is, hey guys, on average, on average, if you just go, you know, slice your time frame down, and this is a poor line, uh, into April and then go into like sometimes May, I mean certain years, almost the majority of years from X marks the spot to this, you know, time frame in here, right, we see, and except for even one year it turned down and then it still kind of had a seasonal upturn, more years than not, you can see the averages tend to go up into April, May time period. Some years are better than others, and that's the whole thing about seasonality. So it's interesting that the Russell, the IWM, was the one that I was kind of focusing on because it's it's also a segment of the market that um, has been, uh, uh, you know, the most by by most standards brutalized uh, from a net percent change on the year. Also, if our economy, if the Fed is held hostage from raising rates anymore, which Janet Yellen today was extremely uh, positive for the market, saying we're not raising rates, there's some headwinds, there's some things out there, the European markets and foreign markets, and quite frankly, that's what we knew back at Christmas time when, you know, everyone was saying, listen, there's an issue around the globe, and, you know, just from a psychological aspect, even though it's a quarter rate, and a quarter rate is not making a difference, plus, if I make a, a, a deposit in my bank, I'm not getting that quarter rate hike as an interest payment to me. So it doesn't really make a, a, a real big difference to me, um, you know, what, what happens on a quarter point, right? So with that said, I think um, when, when you want to go and look at seasonality, you got to, number one, look at, you know, in order to figure out where a market might go, ask yourself where it's been. What are the conditions? As this shows us in the last, what, 15 years, not all years are created equally, right? And some years are better than others. Some years it works, some years it doesn't, some years it works incredibly well, and some years, in, in other words, we get a magnified move, and some years we get a muted move. So if you go back to appearance, and, and you just go and click on average, and hit apply and OK, it kind of will average out It'll average out for you, you know, the overall trend. So from on average, all of those years combined, you know, from about March until end of April and even into late May, um, we see that the small caps have a tendency to rise this time of year, okay? And that's, that's really uh, an important feature to understand. So that's why back in March, I was kind of, if you guys remember, um, and if you don't remember, it would really be a great segue for you guys to go back. We'll, we'll look for that link, get it back out to you, and then take a review of that. Because I think it's, it's kind of important um, of the features that you can do, maybe not for this particular move, even though I think that the Russell still has more upside. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and, and where we're going to go from here. Okay? So if you go back and hit style one more time and go to chart mode, once again, chart mode, and go back to standard, bingo, you're back on track with just 
your charts. All right. So first and foremost, one of the things that I've always utilized, and, and, and that's the, one of the beauties about uh, this particular book, talked a little bit about seasonality. It also is so outdated. I introduced in 2005, when I started to write the book, I introduced this thing, uh, these, these new products that were coming online. It, it wasn't that new, but ETFs were starting, they had just launched GLD, SLV, the gold and silver ETF. I mean, we hadn't, didn't really have a whole lot of ETFs at that point in time, except for if you want to consider the spiders and the Qs. Those were, had been around. But what we didn't have was things like, there's a, in the chapter one, I talk about the FXE. It was a brand new uh, exchange traded fund on the euro currency. And I, in, that, in that chapter one of that book, I talked about, guys, if you're going to, as a stock trader, and, for, and it's optionable, so, you know, as this thing starts to get more traction and attention and volume, right, instead of doing your analysis on the FXE, use the futures markets. Use the futures markets, and many of you will know it's the, uh, the 6 forward slash on thinkorswim forward slash 6E right uh, and then add an M and then a 6 and that will get you your euro currency electronic June 2016 contract I always tell people if you're looking at an ETF look at the underlying market especially if it is tracking a commodity so if you're looking at UNG which as you know UNG is natural gas you want to look at the natural gas futures forward slash NG on on toss and um, that's what we would do. So back in the day, we were really looking at the commodity and the ETFs that were available to us. And that's why we had this book over here, the Commodity Traders Almanac. And unfortunately, I think that word commodity scared everybody. And the, the neat thing about that is that even on, as, as Cindy last time was talking about Hershey's, uh, this book in 2000, and I think the 2009 issue on page 37, talked about the Hershey trade and the correlation between cocoa prices and Hershey and the seasonality in March that Hershey's HSY has. So I was sitting here behind the scenes, guys, and I was sitting there chuckling because I'm like, oh, man, this is stuff that we did, you know, almost, you know, a decade ago. It was really a neat book in the sense that we were looking at seasonalities, not just of commodities, but stocks that related to commodities, whether it was in tandem or inverse. In other words, if, if the price of corn goes up, does, what happens to the stock of John Deere? Is there a correlation of when Monsanto or potash goes up? Which time of the year? Are they correlated with underlying grain movements? So that was the kind of the work that, that was conducted with the Commodity Traders Almanac. So fast forward, this book actually went forward just for stocks and, and talked a lot about the different sub sectors so that's what I want to get a little bit about today you got to know what's going on in a market we have first and foremost and and so this is about thinkorswim however I don't just solely use thinkorswim for my market analysis as many of you guys know all right um, as you know I also use another analytical tool but one of the things that I look at all right is that if I can go over here and share with you and I know you can create this since I already have it done but what I look at all right is the top sector ETFs you know we have the materials we have the home builder peripherals we've got energy XLE but it's not just XLE we look at we also look at the oil and gas exploration XOP and we also look at the OIH right so we have several different sectors transportation we like to look at regional banks we want to look at, semiconductors which are important. We look at the materials, the financials, not just any financials. We also look at, as I mentioned, the regional banks, the insurance companies, right? Broker dealers, there's the IAI. So we break it down to different sectors. And why do we do that? Because this book, guys, and this is kind of important, um, and, and I guess a picture will, uh, might just tell a thousand stories. Um, we have this, um, and I'm going to plug this in for you guys. 
okay, um, you may want to click on this link. This link is a, a Google shortener link. I'm going to click on it myself. Basically, what this is is a weekly thoughts and observation. Maybe some of you guys have seen this uh, weekly thoughts and observations that I've uh, tweeted out. Um, and, and basically, what I do is I put out my thoughts for the week. We get out um, different um, concepts. What's it's a plan for the week? Okay, is really what it is. All right, it's a plan for the week. And that in that in that guide. What I've done is, in, and I'll show you in a, um, I guess it'd be important to go through this real quick. I'm going to give you the Word doc version, see if everyone can see that. This is just real easy. So as you can see, I actually create this. Uh, this particular week came out yesterday. Normally it comes out Sunday, but you know, heck, it was Easter. Um, we're waiting for the end of the quarter, but just, just as a quick review, one of the things that we are uh, looking for, just to let you know, the concept um, that we are looking for is that we are looking for the IWM per, to be posed for one more leg up as we head into May, setting up for a stellar bear trap. So focus really has been in the last few weeks and waiting for a market to move up here. Uh, we definitely saw Janet Yellen speaking and she had an effect on the marketplace. and um, We've come out with, you know, my thoughts, what's going on, uh, different concepts, what we're looking for, and this tool right in here, which is really important, guys. Um, this is called the breadth analysis. A lot of you guys have access to breadth analysis in the form of the NYSE, the Advanced Decline Comparative Ratio line. We've taken it and broken it down and use it on the top stocks indexes, the S&Ps, the Qs, the Diamonds, the Russell, which is what we're looking at right here, the IWM, the NASDAQ composite, and then everyone has access, for the most part, to the NYSE. I think in this environment, just as a reminder, in this environment, I mean, we've got uh, algo traders, we've got uh, traders, we've got people scrounging, scrounging the countryside of the, the universe of stocks, jumping from one sector to another, to another, to another. And every one of those sectors kind of impacts and weighs in on the top stock indices. So Dow components, heavy blue chip, and high dividend yielding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the point I want to make. Coming into April, right, coming into April, and this is what that green book talked about, was when do we see that seasonality, not just the commodities, but when do we see the seasonality for sectors gaining strength? Ironically, seasonally strong sectors for April. Now, I'm giving you this in writing because now you have a tool in Thinkorswim that you can go and double check. But DRG, drug sector, today, ironically, biotech was down this morning, drug stocks were up. Biotech starts to kick in gear towards after the first week. And so we're actually stalking biotech. And biotech, the IBB, as everyone knows, is down. And we'll get to that in a minute. XLB, which is materials, industrials, broker-dealers, moo. This is an interesting one right there. It's not full of cows, but it's full of agricultural stocks. Energy, actually. Consumer staples, health care, financials, materials. What else do we got? Retail. And, the, and, and, and for gosh sakes, what else do we got? Utilities. These generally, on average, over the last 20 years, have seen an upside move in the month of April. And that's why maybe we've got a little bit of jump going on in the market. We've got Janet out of the way. Man, we've got some influences. If you look at all of these top sectors, man, they, it's not just let's pay attention to crude oil anymore, right? Now we have a difference of sector leadership that could take over by a bulk of markets. That's what I wanted to get to. So as we look ahead, you know, we've got Janet Yellen today out of the way. Uh, we got a Fed speaker tomorrow. You got to be kidding me! I think everyone's going to wake up tomorrow and kind of figure out. You know, uh, no one's going to really care about a seven-year auction. German jobs might be important. GDP, um, you know, for the UK might be a little bit important. Uh, but and maybe you got the Jap Japan tanken uh, survey. That's a kind of a major economic report for them. Uh, will will come out Thursday, but 
April Fool's Day, April Fool first, make no mistake, that's going to have some more impact. So I think this young lady right here, Janet Yellen, just had a royal flush for the market in what she said today. And I think the market just might trade on its own accord, meaning pay attention to these seasonal tendencies and more importantly, the condition. And I'm going to type, I'm going to write this word, condition. Condition. Pay attention to that word. What does condition mean? What is the condition? Does it mean the RSI? Does it mean moving averages? What does condition to John Person mean? That's kind of an interesting concept. What the condition means is what the health, the breadth of the market is all about. And that's some of the tools that we could utilize in Thinkorswim. And that's what we're here for. Okay? But I do want to let you know before we move on, today I have a little thing that I kind of look for, guys. I run a scan. It's a little more advanced than what Thinkorswim can, uh, that has. But what this scan is, is it's kind of looking for a daily high close doji pattern one of my signature patterns that we look for, while the weekly is in a buy mode. So this is TripAdvisor. Today we were talking about this in our own trading room, which was really kind of a neat thing. It was up uh, nearly 6% today. TripAdvisor's price line, Expedia, while it hasn't caught a bid in the marketplace, um, today it generated, it started to get acceleration before Janet Yellen started to speak. And I look for, I think, what, what I wanted to see in, in selfishly doing this right now is how many stocks are generating a, a daily buy signal in while the weekly's in a buy mode. I wanted to share this with you for your benefit coming into today to say out of everything, and let's take a look here so that you understand, this is all NYSE stocks. I'm actually surprised. I'm actually surprised that we had very few stocks that generated new daily buy signals while the weekly is in a buy mode, quite frankly. And that might be reflected of why the S&Ps didn't generate such a strong move. And you can see here, we didn't really get, we had some in the financial arena, but we didn't, and there's a, a, a biotech name, a few, not many, biotech stocks that had generated a fresh buy signal. But boy, we didn't really get that many fresh buy signals. This is another one. This is a daily buy signal when the weekly's in a buy mode. In other words, when we have that PPS buy on a weekly chart, I want to know how many daily buy signals are generating. And quite frankly, and, and this is kind of a, a really neat scan, but this is the kind of work that I like to do to find out, did we get brand new buy signals? And if not, why not? That's what I want to ask myself. And I think we're going to come up to that conclusion as we move forward. But I covered a little bit of things that just to give you an idea of what I like to look for, which is what this book was really all about. How do we combine utilizing certain conditional ideas? We got a buy signal. Did we get buy signals in a concentration of sectors? And if you start to scan every day, let's say today's Tuesday, and then today, we're going to run a scan and, and, and try to find some stocks in the sectors that we've just mentioned that are entering a seasonally strong period of time. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, you do the same thing. And then Thursday, you do the same thing. So here's what you got to do. Because the funds, it's us against them. And they're no dummies, right? They're trying to hide what they want to do. They're, the market is sneaky. The market tries to trick us bore us and scare us to death. And that's the market's job, right? It, and I call it delayed reaction. You think a product should go up and you're long and you're sitting there and it doesn't move and the day you start to see some theta decay and you're in an, a directional option trade and you go, I'm out of this thing. Or you got tired, you're in an outright long position. The minute you click the exit strategy and you close out the position, I mean, it almost seems sometimes the very next nanosecond it takes off without you. That's what the markets tend to do. They tend to bore us and scare us to death. And that's why we've got to look at what I'm going to share with you today, what's been very effective this year, last year, and for a number of decades, is that in more recent history, that we see these funds start to scale into positions over a period of time, right? And, and that's kind of what's really cool. So when I look at Thinkorswim, 
And right now, I'm just going to jump right into it. Let's go to scan here, right? Just let's take a look at this. I've already got it teed up on a month. Why would you think I've got it teed up on a month? Because guess what, folks? The month is ending on Thursday. And we have, believe it or not, a lot of names that are going to generate fresh monthly buy signals, which is really weird, which if they do, then that gives us the, what, maybe confidence that if it's a heavy concentration of fresh buy signals in specific sectors, let alone a lot of sectors, that means we might see in the one condition, that word that I wrote down, if we get an accumulation of volume, that tells me that the so that the, maybe this particular move has a little bit more legs. Maybe this would be, you know, the, the market's joke on humanity, the biggest bear trap it's ever set, or at least set for a long time. So let's go over here, and I'm not going to scan. You know what? I am going to scan in all stocks, and I'm going to add a study filter. Many of you have been here before, so you need, if you're, if you're just practicing on Thinkorswim, you need a real account for this. As soon as I hit add a study account, uh, add study filter, this study thing comes up and populates right here. The la new box pops up. And notice it says ADX crossover. The reason it does that is because it's alphabetical. You go down to license study, and the first thing you want to do is look for PPS. We, in this case, are looking for fresh buy signals. Now, I can't run a monthly buy signal today and the reason I can't is because the month's not over. So I'm going to have to run this on when? Thursday night, right? So at the end of every day, I can run the scan for a daily. And I'm going to do that right now. What's incredibly unique about Thinkorswim is that we just found out that we have 1,600 stocks generating a buy signal. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but it says industry over here. Now, you might not have industry, so you'd want to say, John, how the hell do you get industry? And I'm going to say real simple. Click on the header up here, right-click on it, click on Customize, and you're going to want to scroll down until you find the word. Let's look for it together. Where is it? Industry, right after in neck. Go industry, add the item, and then hit OK. I already have it in there. Why would I do that? Well, real simple. If I scroll down, I can, it, it, and if I, if I click on it, it's going to be maybe, for you, it may be all, inter, you know, mixed. But if you double click on that new header on industry, what does it do? It populates the signals and groups it. So we understand that we've got some telecommunication, semiconductors, et cetera, et cetera. You've got Cavium over here. You're familiar with that name, Cirrus Logic. So we got some semiconductors in play on today's daily buy signal. Um, we've got a lot of different stocks, Internet software. So the Qs obviously weigh in on what? The NASDAQ weighs in on some technology and biotech. Funny thing, today bank stocks got kind of beat up a little bit, especially the regional, but they came back to life towards the end. Look at this. Here we go. Pharmaceutical, drug stocks. Didn't I just say that drug stocks, DRG, have a tendency to move up in, in the month of April? DRG. DRG. Let's take a look at that real quick. So we're going to go over here, and I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to go, hopefully, DRG. There's the pharmaceutical index. And we're going to go to style, and we're going to go to chart modes, and we're going to go to seasonality, and I'm going to go to style, and I got daily 20 years. And whoa, look at this. Interesting. What do you guys see? Interesting. What do you see on the drug sector? So from when March, when we met, a lot of drug stocks are in the S&P 500, but there's a lot of drug stocks that are in what? Small cap drug stocks in the Russell, right? So now I'm starting to say, well, wait a minute. 
I've got, I've got a, a, I mean, that's a pretty pronounced trend, you got to admit, right? Over the last 20 years, on average, I mean, for the rest of the summer, you don't get anything. And then, of course, you know, in August, uh, you know, maybe it has a little bit more uh, upside in October. It comes all the way back down. But that, on average, and then you can go over here to the wheel, go over here to the wheel, and what are we going to do? We're going to go to appearance. We're going to not average it out. I'm going to go yearly. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to get this really psychedelic looking stuff, right? And you can kind of feed out um, on, the, on the header here. It'll list what year, what the change was, that kind of stuff. So it really does uh, think or swim kind of break things down a little bit. And you can see that on average, a lot of the stocks in, in, uh, or a lot of the years, this stock sector, drug stocks, did pretty well. Except for this particular year, one year I see a yellow line go down. One year I see, you know, very few, a gray line in here. A couple years didn't quite work. But for the most part, going in, going up, going up, moving on up to the east side is in this time frame right here from March going into May. So it is validated more times than not in the drug sector. So to me, that's kind of an interesting play. Now I just have to figure out what, what maybe sector could be affected by drugs. So I could look at ETF. I could start scanning for individual stocks. As we know, individual stocks will always you know, give you the more greatest rate of return being right, right, in directional trading. But to go through a list of names of stocks, at least I'm able to filter out the seasonality and then go through and say, all right, show me what is generating a buy signal. And that, I think, is a very powerful approach to combining the correct use of some seasonal analysis. I think the problem with seasonal analysis is that too many people you know, rely too much on it. And remember, when I say technical analysis supersedes seasonal analysis, it's not just the condition of the rally by looking at price indicators. I mean, if you put a 20-period moving average in Bollinger Bands, that's the middle band, 20-period moving average. So you've got, or you use a 12, 26, 9-period MACD, you know, you're almost using kind of like a 10-period, 20-period moving average crossover you know, you're you're doubling up on a price indicator. Um, we want to look at whether or not there is continuity, strength in numbers. Is there a a, a, a a concentration of buy signals in that group, or is it just maybe one or two heavy weighted cap stocks that affect that group, causing it to go up? What do you think would be better if we ran a scan and found out that, you know? We, we had a strong concentration of drug stocks start to populate in a buy signal. Doesn't that make sense, everybody? Of course it does. I mean, we actually had a whole bunch of healthcare stocks populate today. So here's what's really neat. Let's do this. Instead of going to all stocks, let's now just switch down and go by industry. So I'm going to go down by industry here. So I'm going to go industry. I'm looking for drug stocks, healthcare, all healthcare, or do I want to go with pharmaceuticals? Let's test the waters. What do you say? We go pharmaceutical. Hit scan. Here are the pharmaceutical names. Um, here's the percent change today. Here's the last trade price. So we can go through and kind of even add another study filter uh, about weeding out volume, cap, things like that to really etch out the lower cap names. All right, and then I think what what I said is since institutions are not stupid, today you might not see a whole lot of drug stocks. But what about tomorrow? What about yesterday? Okay, maybe they're doing it over time. That's what I, my point is. Remember, I wrote down you run a scan. You know, today's Tuesday, so tomorrow you want to see what happens on Wednesday, right? And then on Thursday, and all of a sudden you start to see the larger cap names, Eli Lilly, and you start to see Bristol Myers in here, right? Um, and then you, you might find Abbott Labs had already generated a buy signal, Teva Pharmaceuticals, and then that's where I think you'll, you'll get a better edge in the market ahead of, 
you know, by the time you run a scan on the ETF itself, this individual drugs, they buy those first and then it weighs on and that's how that can kind of happen. So when, when I look at, let's say, Lilly, for example, and I look at Lilly, I mean, that to me is a pretty darn ugly chart. It really doesn't look that pretty. Um, now what I can do is I can go over to, I'm going to go to studies. I'm going to add to a study. What am I going to add? Find my name. My name's John Person. And we have the PPS indicator. So I'm going to click on that. And as soon as I click on that, I've got a daily chart with the arrows. Buy or bullish and bearish momentum indicators. Now, I like to look at two things. I like to break it down into two time frames. Minimum, I like to look at the longer term picture. So I like to look at the weekly. When you looked at the daily chart a few minutes ago, man, it looked pretty ugly. When I look at the weekly, I look at this weekly and I go, wow, that's kind of interesting. Markets had this huge run up since 2013, right? I mean, this is where it based out. And then it had a breakout and it's been in a corrective mode not since January, it actually peaked out back here in, in 2015. That's kind of interesting. Now, I do not have a PPS weekly buy signal, one of those blue arrows pointing yet. I don't have that. But by the end of this week, we would be wanting to change that scan feature and look for maybe a fresh buy signal, right? So you'd look at Lilly and you can go to BMY and you know, you could look at some of the other drug stocks and some look better than others. And by the way, if you take a look with me here, you'll notice if you understand the high close doji pattern, we had a doji. If we close over last week's high, Bristol Myers, BMY, will form a weekly, not a daily, but a weekly buy signal based on a high close doji. It is already in a weekly PPS buy. It just hasn't gone up yet, right? It hasn't gone down, but it hasn't gone up yet. Maybe now that Bristol Myers is in a entering a seasonally strong period of time, this could be one that could be a contention for higher prices. So the question begs, how much higher, John? And I'd say, well, here's a tool that I use. Let's go to studies. Let's go to add a study, find my name, John Person, indicators. And we're going to click on Person's Pivots. Two indicators, very powerful, predictive, but separate and created differently. Click on Person's Pivots. John, nothing happened. Well, it's real simple. We've got a weekly candlestick chart and we've just hit Person's Pivots. By default, it's going to give you the daily pivots, which it won't show up on a weekly chart. Does that make sense? I'll prove it. If I click on one hour, now I've got an, a 60-minute chart. I have a 60-minute chart with daily pivots. Basically, person's pivots gives you a predicted range of support and a resistance. And based on the trading session, like yesterday, it predicted that today was going to be a bullish mode. How do we know that? Because the green was higher than the prior day's green, and the red was higher than the prior day's red. All right, so that doesn't help you for discovering longer-term analysis. Let's change the study by going to Edit. And we're going to click on the wheel. As soon as it comes up, it tells you you got two indicators up here, PPS and, of course, person's pivot. So click on the wheel. If I'm looking for um, a longer-term trade, at the very least, I'm going to look at monthly. And since we just had last week an option expiration, I can, with a heavy optionable traded product, I can use the option expiration and because that is a month it's just not a calendar month it's a month of when the options expire if that makes sense to you so let's try option expiration and click show study and hit OK apply 
and hit OK. And now I have the one hour chart with a monthly pivot. Let's change this to a weekly chart because that, that's where we were. Stretch it out. Now, ironically, you would say to me, well, John, um, you're in a buy. It didn't go anywhere. The month gave you a higher predicted high and a higher predicted low for the current month of March. March is over, but we're not using a calendar month, are we? We're using an option expiration month, aren't we? And so, therefore, guess what, guys? By next option expiration, I'm not, I'm not going to guarantee this, but we have an idea, a target, that the person's pivot indicator is, is it's, it's targeting right now a higher high and a higher low for this next time period. And if we get a higher close over a doji high, the high close doji candle, we are already in a PPS buy, we stand a good chance for the market to get near that pivot resistance. I mean, it doesn't, it, it's not an exact science, but you know, when you get buy signals, it generally can tend to stay in a buy mode until the signal changes, right? And so we've had a buy signal here, a sell signal there, a sell signal here, and a buy signal there. So we're not really going anywhere fast, and we haven't gone anywhere fast, but and maybe Bristol-Myers is a dog of a stock anyway. I mean, it doesn't really move that far. But it's just a case in point. How do we put the, the, the indicators together to formulate a trading idea? It's got to start from somewhere. And if we're looking at the overall market being perhaps bullish this time of year, what's going to drive that sector? Well, this is a sector that all of us probably, unless you were, um, well, I mean, it, it, it's been, it was, uh, you know, back here, I, I mean, I remember being at the Traders Expo and I, I pulled the audience. In fact, it was right there. And I said, how many of you guys, I mean, everyone was in uh, biotech because it was just easy money. Throw a dart at a dartboard, you made money. I mean, it was buy anything and everyone loved biotech. And that party kind of came to an end and it got real choppy and now it's just been, you know, it, it's kind of done what? bored everyone to death, it's chopped around and people aren't interested, they're not making money in it and I'll bet you 10 to 1, more people forget about the biotech sector, they're scared you had what, a presidential candidate, uh, you know, mentioned that they were going to investigate drug stock prices, right, back then at the high, that didn't help things, but um, you know, all of a sudden, we come into a time frame where it's going to enter a seasonally strong period of time. And the biotech, I'm not saying can rally all the way, you know, back up here, but it certainly wouldn't be a surprise to see the market come back into this zone right there, right? Especially over the next uh, quarter or into the May time period. All we are looking for, though, is some kind of a buy signal. We're in a weekly sell mode. We don't have a daily buy. And I'm not seeing a lot of fresh daily buy signals, or am I? The funny thing is, over the last two weeks, what we have been seeing is a lot of daily buy signals in small cap biotech names that may be related to the effect of the Russell. So what might be a really neat thing to find opportunity is hit that scan button, right, and then start generating... Um, add a study filter, excuse me, no, we're going to go pharmaceuticals, we're going to go by industry, we're going to go healthcare, and we're going to start going by looking at biotech specific, right? So we're going to start to go for, oops, buy signal, biotech, scan it, there it is. All right, so today, we actually generated 33 names in the biotech world. I mean, some names are not, you know, they're not penny stocks by any stretch of the imagination, right? Um, some of these names you might not be familiar with, but I'm going to bet some of these names are both in the NASDAQ composite as well as the Russell. So let's double check that, shall we? 
let's go over here instead of look at biotech let's go over here and we're going to go right on down and let's go to oh, wait there it is Russell 2000 so let's run a scan on the Russell 2000 so what did we find today in the Russell 2000? Interesting, semiconductors. Well, that's kind of interesting, right? Um, and then all of a sudden, we, we come down, software, software, a lot of software today, internet software, real estate, real estate, insurance, thrifts, banks. How did banks go up today, right? You wouldn't think that, but apparently we had a lot of small cap banks move up. Pharmaceuticals, and then all of a sudden, some of the small cap biotech names. So my point is that, can you imagine if energy is not the leader today, right? We had a broad-based rally from multiple sectors hit the Russell 2000 today, and that's why it accelerated. But as you can clearly see, we probably had what? Between pharmaceutical all the way down to healthcare, biotech included, probably the strongest sector that really populated, I mean, more so than restaurants, leisure, apparel, all that kind of stuff, right? A few like Cracker Barrel, Buffalo Wild Wings, you know, okay, great. But boy, from a concentration level, as I'm scrolling down with you guys today, fresh daily buy signals were populated more so in biotech, drug, and healthcare sector than any of the main sectors here. Certainly more than metals and mining, chemicals, aerospace, defense, and so what I would strongly recommend is maybe perhaps there is a stealth buying going on that may ensue in those sectors. It's kind of funny if we go back to um, this list, uh, we had financials, banks, and the XLF get bid up a little bit today. Retail, XRT, we got that kind of bid up today, right? Uh, materials, that got bid up today. So I think it, 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 it proves a point that if we're looking for great buy setups and we're looking to get an, a tradable idea, instead of going with your opinion, then this is a definitive way of saying, you know what, there's concentration. They're not just buying one stock, two stocks. They're buying a boatload of different sectors of stocks and a heavy concentration at that. Even the semiconductors, uh, you know, started to catch a nice little bid on some of these names. As I already mentioned, Cavium is one. So now that I've got uh, the biotech here, I'm looking at this daily chart here, and you know, biotech could have been, it could be in this kind of range in here, bored to tears. It's in a trading range at best. It hasn't done anything. But we do have kind of a low that's posted in the market. What we would be looking for is this market to clear a swing high. So for me, I think that biotech, we do have seasonality. Let's go back, double check that, and maybe we can help temper our impatience, maybe, or more importantly, stalk this sector. What would happen to the market if biotech's caught a bid? What do you think would happen? What sector does it influence the most, right? Well, obviously the Qs, the Qs have a pretty strong influence with biotech and, you know, they've got the, the large cap names. They got all the fun guys. They got the Amgen, right? You got your Amgen, which I kind of think Amgen, and I love this pattern, by the way, guys. So this is a daily signal. It's been in a daily buy mode. It's pulled back. We actually were talking about watching. At one point today, it looked really ugly. It was a big red candle at one point today, right? It was red. And it says, watch this market if it pops back through the opening range. This market could be ready to accelerate to at least not test the option expiration person's pivot. Let's go back and study, edit the study, and let's now get rid of that. I'm just going to do it real easy, study, oops, I messed up, edit the study, excuse me, go to the wheel, change this from time frame right here, option expiration, uh-oh, wrong click, we know that.
for that time. Okay. All right. John, we're at monthly pivot resistance. Yes, but the month ends Thursday. So if you want to find out what next month's going to look like, click on the bottom right corner. This is an expression. See that double arrow right here? If you look right there at the bottom, right there. Click right there. And let's do this. Let's change the right expression setting. I've got it at 2. Let's go 6 just for the heck of it. I'm going to hit apply and OK. Now we've got something interesting. This is the current month's resistance. So far we're in a daily buy signal. We broke a nice symmetrical downtrend line. You've got to admit, if you draw a little trend line, that's you know off a high, off the average of highs, off the highs, off the highs, off the high, off the high, and it broke out. And it hasn't really gone down. It's sitting here. It's actually what I would consider holding value, right? It's at monthly pivot resistance. We got a new month, and we got a monthly target up at around 154 and a half. If this is kind of like the old what we call A B C, this would be a D wave, and you know maybe we come back, and that would make sense. We come up here. I'm also eyeing the fact that we got this gaping gap in the market way the heck up here, guys. Right? There's a gap up there that you can run the Indy 500 racetrack through. Right? See that gap up there? If this if this particular stock does want to get a bid going to it, and if there is some accumulation in volume coming, then this thing could see some fast upside. That's what, if we have that weekly analysis, and oh, by the way, yes, we are in a weekly buy, a daily buy, so if we conclude the month up in a stronger note, it's not just Amgen, that's a part of the cues. We've got cell gene as well, right? Uh, I'm not saying they're going to be the you know greatest traits in sliced bread, but now that we're entering a seasonally strong period of time, if you keep your eye on a few of these big cap uh, biotech names, you also keep your eye on the scans. So I didn't want to get too carried away and going all in on just uh, biotech, but it seems that we have semis communications coming in, and we have a lot of different segments of the market, software, um, and, and that is a, a pretty diversified, broad-based rally that ensued uh, today, and that is based off of what? The Russell 2000. So we want to know why the Russell 2000 took off. We had more healthcare, small cap healthcare stocks come into play. You also had which, to my surprise, not that we were not expecting it, but we had some financial banks. This sm small cap banks came in and thrifts and mortgages, were, there they are. That was two heavy areas that added to uh, the market's strength today. Ironically, um, that's kind of what we were anticipating in this weekly thoughts and observations. Um, this is what we wrote about this week. Why were we looking for the Russell to uh, have another leg up and outperform? Uh, one of the main reasons is because we were talking about, we were looking for, can you imagine if perhaps right here, uh, we are going to be focusing on buy signals from biotech as well as the financials. And last week we had numerous small cap biotechs populate daily buy signals this week. I noticed also that we had a lot of preferred large cap bank stocks generate weekly buy signals, which means big smart money is buying preferred large cap names like Wells Fargo, Bank America. So they're buying into the banks, they're just not buying the common stock. They're buying the banks that are guaranteed by the government, they're not going to go out of business, and they could sit through and collect the six, in some case, six and three quarter percent yield like Bank America and Wells Fargo. Now I did hear, and you may have heard this too, that our good friend Warren Buffett announced to the world that he's been buying bank stocks and buying Wells Fargo. I'm going to bet 20 bucks. No, there's too many people in the room. I'm going to bet a lot of, I'll bet a penny to everybody that I bet you he was buying preferred. I don't think he was buying the common. I don't think that's Warren's style. I bet you he was buying the preferred stock for that extra dividend yield because that's what's been showing up on our scans, and that can show up with yours as well. 
So this is the kind of stuff that we put out, and, and this is what we're kind of anticipating for the market. By the way, for this week, we have multitude of stocks and sector ETFs forming, not just get this, guys. We're not just going to form a daily high-close doji, but we have the potential to form monthly high-close dojis on a lot of sectors like the spiders, the IWM, the Russell, right? And uh, obviously, this should be a comma. The IWM, that nice. And here's another one, the China FXI. So the FXI, and I'm going to conclude this because we took a little too much time going through this on how you can do and run scans, but what's really neat is in here, we can actually go through and, and go category and go um, optionable stocks, NYSE stocks, right? Um, we can go into ETFs, all ETFs, and at the end of the month, may I tell you this, at the end of the month, Thursday night, go over here, click on D, change that to month, and hit scan in all ETFs. What will be funny is I'll bet you you'll find, you might find some monthly buy signals set up in some of these ETFs, right? Um, let me go over and just share with you the FXI. Now, remember last summer when everyone was focused on Greece? I came back from Italy on vacation and said, hey, kids, Greece ain't the problem. It's China. We wrote about it. It was in our weekly thoughts and observations. And guess what? It turned out to be, by the time everyone figured it out, it really was China. It really wasn't Greece, right? And then the, everyone jumped on that bandwagon. Now what's interesting is, look at this. Here's a doji on a monthly chart. Again, I'm looking at a monthly chart, monthly. And we might get a monthly high closed doji. So I can't tell you, today being Tuesday, how the market's going to close on Thursday. But I can tell you that this is a high probability set up that if we get a monthly high closed doji, that is a nice trigger from a long side perspective. It make me feel warm and fuzzy if it was backed by a buy sit up signal. So it is in a also the FXI, I think you can run a seasonal, uh, it hasn't been around that long, but again, this is the large cap China fund that's denom dollar denominated. So it takes into account for dollar fluctuations. But this is kind of an interesting a situation that if rising tides lifts all boats and you've got not just the FXI but you get the EWG like for example Germany if Germany can start to pick up on a monthly basis which it is right if you can get the uh, EWQ which is France and if it can get some garner some some legs going because you, as you can see it's not just China it's other uh, uh, Emerging markets, EEM, take a look at those. Hey, they're starting to see some, some nice recovery here. So once again, I think it's imperative that we kind of take a, a better look at the market. If we're going to get and, and put our own money to trade and try to find great trading opportunities, I'm telling you right now, the scanning features and the way we put this together is just absolutely dynamic. So um, you can use stock options, change that to futures, Mike N., uh, it, it's just, it's pretty impressive. The annual percentage of winners in a report. I'm glad you asked that. Um, let me show you a weekly report, what we've put out. And I mean, we obviously have uh, putting together a small little uh, sample here every week. Um, you can take a look at, and I haven't obviously caught up to the month of March, which was pretty spectacular as well. But even back on February 22nd, and, and a lot, of, all of this has, you know, been... It, you, heck, you can find it in our, our document tab. It's all put out there. And a lot of this stuff I put out on Twitter, which is amazing. Which, speaking of Twitter, it's generating a, um, it, it's, it's a trade that right now uh, we went back in, and it's not doing too well. But BABA, uh, Herbal Life, I mean, we've just had some amazing, amazing stock picks that have just been spectacular. In fact, if you take a look at, at that, um, I mean, I'm not, you know, how do you gauge what you trade? Do you trade stock? Do you trade options? Did you trade a directional option? You know, how do you measure a guy that may have taken an out-of-the-money option, doubled his money? How do you put that in a percent change? All I can do is say, here's a stock that we recommended. 
and here's what happened to it, down nine tenths of a percent. Here's the stock BB&T, Capital One, CF, H-Band, Zion, BBT, PE, KB, DHI. Here's their percent rate of return from the time we recommended it and the time that the trade took place. HLF, 9%. I mean, that's what this market's really given us over the course of, of uh, the year. Uh, win, up 25%. Uh, there's another one. Roadrunner, transportation, up 52% climbing. There's just been Qualcomm, 15%. Uh, Apache, up 21%. I mean, some Caterpillar is another one. 10% uh, move plus. Really some amazing setups and some amazing trades. Um, one that we did and just tweeted out, you can go to the website, and I'm going to bring that up for you real quick, and we'll, we'll just wrap this up. Um, I've actually put up in this particular week, one thing that we were stalking was uh, the British pound, uh, but we'll leave that for another day. But, um, you know, the fact that we're focused on Russell this week, and it, I mean, literally, it's not guessing. It's, there was hard work put together. Um, and then, you know, looking at some of our names that we're, we're kind of looking for. Um, and you can see, like two weeks ago, PayPal, which rose, and, and uh, Boyd Gaming, um, and then Boyd Gaming had more follow-up. Um, really some neat stuff that we put out here uh, on, on um, our Twitter account, live and in person. So uh, Amgen looks ready to hit. This was one we put out at, at 147 in the trading room. And our target was 150. It, you know, went a little bit beyond 150, and then it's retraced. So it gave us already a nice trade, and now we're stocking it for a, a resurgent. Um, Sarepta, we put up four biotechs on March 20th, and the next day, the very next day, Sarepta wasn't up 14. It was up 22%, allowing people to take profits. This is a, my birthday. That's a three-pound basketball a friend gave me of milk chocolate. Anyway, um, I do throw out a couple jokes every once in a while, but other other trades that we put up, Baba, uh, Red Hat, Caterpillar, all of these names. In fact, this was a trade that we put out, and, and it had an, an incredible, you got to admit, in hindsight, right, if you check this out, a nice inverted head and shoulder. We had the buy signal there, good symmetry, nice, excellent uh, relative strength, volume, and uh we took that one right off and, and it did really well. So a lot of the stock trades that we put out, not only do I tweet it out, I tweet it out because a lot of our community members aren't maybe in the room that day and we want to take a profit. And so anyway, it, it's been pretty spectacular. And a lot of that is all something that you can find in our weekly thoughts and observations. And I think if, you're, if I'm not mistaken, um, I've already put the um, link, I will do it again, of this current weeks and again I'll have another one since we're having a new week and a new quarter and a new month and we put that right out there for you click on that link you can read this this week's all right now I promised you something else and here's what I want to promise you all right this is a freebie this is from uh, David Keir from Thinkorswim aka Mr. Script okay this is from Mr. Script himself this right here, you may already have this, right? Um, basically, Cindy sent this to me, and, and, and you know, I think there, there's a lot of different codes out there and different indicators out there. This is one that if you go up to uh, setup, um, Share, excuse me, share. What am I thinking? Go up to share, okay, and, and we're going to uh, share. Uh, and in fact, what I'll do is I'll put this in an email on the recording because we are running out of time and I went over. Basically, what that is is this, this link here. What that is, if you know how to work this, if not, we'll send the directions out for you. And I wanted to go through that a little bit. It's a chart study that labels the tick the tick at extremes. Now, um, we went through, I hope you guys found value on how to run scans in Thinkorswim, how to combine the logic of when we're looking for seasonality and apply one and one to get two. Seasonality, run scans, confirmation, heavy concentration, got a buy signal, can place an order, 
know how to trade it. If I'm directional and it could go up for a multitude of weeks, maybe I sell out of the money, put spreads. Maybe I go directional and along in the money option uh, and go with a stock replacement strategy. I don't know. Everyone has a different aim at what they want to accomplish with the amount of equity they want to trade with. You understand? So with that said, if you're looking for a stock trade or an ETF trade, we like to tell people, hey guys, there's several different ways that you can capture a move. The idea is, I think everyone would certainly agree, if you had better analytical skills and were able to be in the right spot at the right time, whether or not you're long directional options, whether you're in uh, option writing premium strategies, if you had better analytical skills, you'd probably make a little bit more return of your capital. That, I think, is, is pretty pretty well uh, understood. So with that said, uh, that's what we try to accomplish and give people. And then every Monday we come in and do this. And a lot of people have asked what I really do with that weekly thoughts and observation. And what that thoughts and observation is, is a, a, a fantastic, what people have asked for, is a product that's extremely inexpensive that gives high quality research out if you're interested in that and I'll share that with you right now this is a couple things that I wanted to also make a, a house cleaning mention what we have are a couple events that are coming up one I think it's pretty much sold out it's a private event it is going to be incredible uh, we're going on a western Mediterranean cruise we're in Italy and that's June 12th the only other event that I'm scheduled to do is a three-day seminar right here in Palm Beach, Florida. Do not look for me at the money shows this year, uh, not traveling. And uh, so we are just going to be doing the September three-day seminar right here. We'll get more information. It's on, on our website. But this little written report is $49 a month. It comes out every Sunday, sent to your email. Every Monday, we do a video before the markets open, talk about the trade setups for the week. We cover sector ETFs, stocks, seasonal commodity spread trades. We have a pre-market session on Mondays, and it's you have access to the video recording. It's $49 for the month. Every week you get that email on Sundays. So if you're interested in trying out um, what's contained in that report and learning, and, and understanding little things like how we come through specific scans, uh, how we utilize different uh, markets, little things that we didn't have time to go through that I'd share with you about relative strength performance, differentials, where we want to look for different opportunities in the marketplace. Um, by the way, I think um, this is uh, Alibaba. Just to leave you with, Alibaba is... Uh, a potential for further upside. Keep in mind, if the FXI goes, I think both Baidu and Alibaba, it too has that gaping hole to fill. It's called a gap, and it might get a little bit more. And if you look at this chart, you may find yourself with a potential inverted head and shoulders that actually, the um, if it is old school stuff, it actually measures the distance from the neckline to the head if you take that distance and add it up, um, and I'm not saying it's going to get exactly to 85, but would it surprise anybody if all of a sudden we got a blast off and tested those highs? 85 wouldn't be the target to the upside. Anyway, that's Alibaba, and and um, you know there's there's other names out there that we're we're kind of stalking. Amgen, I've already mentioned to you. By the way, uh, volumes looking pretty hot and heavy. Uh, the market today had a nice little recovery. And I, like I said before, I kind of like that pattern. Uh, it might see, you know, at the very least, a little upside move. So, um, it, you know, it, it's not going down, and it's now just entering a seasonally strong period of time. So I think directionally, that's another strategy uh, situation that one could uh, look at. R strong relative strength. Anyway, we kind of put that information in our weekly thoughts and observations. Where's the sector to be in, um, and then what we look like. So today, you caught me as these are scheduled to run these specific scans that are not built into Thinkorswim. These are more advanced, and they give me an edge. 
but I provide those scan results in my weekly planning and scanning. I alert our clients to what the seasonal strengths are and the sectors, and that's something that I think if you're very uh, in, 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 in very uh, adamant about trading uh, stocks and, and the markets and taking a, uh, a professional view of the market, this would be a phenomenal product for you guys, and hands down. It's every single week. So I think uh, that just to give you an idea, that's what we do around here, and that's how I think it would really incorporate what we do with Thinkorswim's product, how we put it together for trading, and how it can help you see success in, in the weeks and months and the year ahead. Because I guarantee you, folks, it's going to be, it has already been a really, really wonderful ride. You can come visit our trading room. You can ask our trading members. We have been on the right side of this market. We don't catch every trade, but I'm telling you right now, we've caught some really fantastic moves in this year. So um, with that said, it's all based on factual trading. We use these specific indicators, and it's not price-based indicators. We use a lot of condition. Of course, my PPS and person's pivots are very powerful, and they're part of the process, but we like to make sure we're in the right sector at the right time, and that helps give us an edge. With that said, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys and take a test drive of our weekly for, for those that aren't day trading, for those that are swing trading, and for those that don't have time to sit around a trading room all day long. Hey, I get it. I understand. And a lot of people have been telling me they're done with day trading. You know, and, and I think day trading is good for some people. Um, swing trading is better for most. Um, and then riding a trade out and, and capitalizing on the trend, that's where a lot of people make substantial money. So these markets have really given some, some pretty wild rides. I mean, Tesla was one that we had just nailed. You know, it's on the Twitter account as well. I mean, we were looking at that 236, a run up to 236, and, you know, we actually traded that about as, uh, uh, it was a pretty wild move for option expiration. 230 now to 215, back to 230, right around that option expiration. That was pretty wild. So um, with that said, I want to wish everyone thank you uh, for attending. I hope you found value today of how to utilize Thinkorswim. And more importantly, for those people that were interested in, hey, what do we do and how can we help you if you're interested? Take advantage of that uh, planning and scanning, that weekly analysis. It really is a fantastic product for people who want information to plan their week ahead, A, number one, a professional scale. It may be, uh, I, I don't think you'll find um, any of the older copies that we have in, in the archives. Uh, they're pretty easy to read and understand, and they're pretty forthright, and you can see where we, you know, while the February 1st issue was talking about getting long uh, Roadrunner Transportation, United Airlines, I mean, there were moves that just were out of the box. Anyway, that's the link. You click on that link and you'll come to the scanning and planning. It's $49 a month. Try it out. And then you'll get your first issue this Sunday. And what that will contain is not just the monthly, but our quarterly outlook and so we already have in this week's issue, which many of you have already had the link to, we have the seasonal setups for the different sectors. Now I'll do, get down and do the dirty work and get down and look at what type, which stocks are the best of breed, so to speak, to look for some intermediate term moves in the next two to three weeks out. With that said, I really thank you all very much for attending. And I hope, uh, you know, today was just another John Person event where you found quality um, information, especially as we promised, taking Thinkorswim platform and showing you how to really apply what we did last session with the seasonality to come up with your own trading ideas. I think for, uh, for those that are uh, looking to take it to the next level, that $49 trial, it's not even a trial, it's $49 a month. Try it for one month, see what happens. I, I really promise you, you're going to love it, and it's going to be instrumental if you're a stock trader. If you're a serious stock trader, this is for you. With that said, everyone, have a great end of month of March and the end of quarter. See you next, uh, I guess, see you next month.
Uh, Terrio, if you're here, I didn't see your question. I should have taken your question, my friend. I'm sorry. If Terrio is here, um, that's the price. That's the special. We just started this. This is not something we really promoted. You've never... How many of you guys have heard me do this? It's, it's, it's something I literally, I've been doing this for myself for two years. Never offered it out to anybody. Um, in fact, wait a second. Um, let me go over and see if... Um, So this is one, just to let you know, uh, when was this created? January of 2014. So, I mean, and you know, so January 13th of, of 2014, over two years, I have never released this information. So this has only been for our daily uh, trading community, and it, it's, been pretty, it, it's been pretty impressive. Um, you know, just I think it's something a lot of people... Uh, you know, maybe just didn't know we did around here, right? Um, and in fact, on on February 1st, right, uh, we just follow up with a lot of really neat information. Uh, obviously, the IWM, we've been tracking this thing for a little while. Um, this was something I think a lot of people, another little thing that I do, it's uh, uh, interesting. This is my famous 11-week cycle. I wrote about this in uh, a Futures Magazine article back in the, 2001 or 2002, the 11-week cycle, um, it, it, it found major cycle lows, and we were, we were coming into a major cycle low, and it also coincided with another little uh, tool that we follow called the McClellan Oscillator, uh, which is also important, something I wanted to kind of touch on with you guys with that uh, thinkorswim script, but needless to say, lots to cover here. Uh, we really, some finer points, here's what we, we're talking about on, on the marketplace. And as you can see, uh, by the way, this is one that we were looking at uh, media, uh, energy sector, uh, technology, and uh, here are the transportation. Uh, this issue, when it came out, uh, was out on a Sunday on January 31st, right, of 2016, sent out email to all our clients. And here are the st stocks that we were going to... I mean, even these names are, have continued to uh, impress. And when I say impress, um, HB Fuller, a material stock, it's a paint company, FUL, I think it just reached a new, if I'm not mistaken, FUL today. Double check. Let's see. HB Fuller, I mean, Yowzer. Uh, I, you know, from 36, handle 34, 35, up to, you know, 42. Still a very nice trade that is, as you can see, something that we recommended uh, back on February 1st in the uh, January 29th edition. So a really nice uh, way of setting up uh, you guys for ideas of certain stocks that you can follow. Um, you know, and, and that's just fuller. This is the one that we were talking about. You guys remember United Airline, which was also in that issue. This was the famous uh, United Airlines UAL when nobody, and I mean nobody, saw this one coming, right? I mean, nice double bottom. It had symmetry. It had buy signals. Uh, and then RRTS, nobody saw this one coming. This would have been up everybody's alley. This should have been, uh, and, and if we take a look, you'll see where the signal uh, ensued. It was this little, this week right here was the buy signal. This is where we got in. And I mean, you couldn't even blink this thing. The only thing that we did was uh, get out a little early and scale our uh, our stops. I mean, it, and now we, we kind of find it at you know, an impasse. But boy, when the world was telling you to sell stock and jump out the window, we were sitting right there telling people, holding their hands, saying, hey, we got some good value here, folks, some really good stuff. It's been uncanny. So anyway, um, with that said, that's uh, the, the information that comes in here. All we got to do is teach you what an HCD setup. You get in on the open. I think many of you already know that. For you guys that are uh, also commodity traders, we put out some really high quality uh, and high probability commodity spreads. 
I don't know if you see this one, the Aussie and the Canadian. Last year, that thing came in. This year, it also worked phenomenally. Last year, the Swiss, uh, the, the Swiss SNB, the Swiss National Bank, came in, adjusted interest rates, and this spread just made tons of bank last year. This year, it didn't do it because the bank didn't adjust interest rates. But, man, it's another seasonal trade on how to safely or less riskier ways of trading certain commodities. You buy crude oil, you sell heating oil against it, you buy cattle, you sell feeder cattle. These are all, uh, you know, uh, testifiable, uh, back-tested seasonal spreads on commodities. New trades. How about copper? I mean, everyone's looking at copper um, now, but how many people were looking at copper back in early February? Not a lot of people. So anyway, there, there has, we, we definitely put this into um, uh, some good use for you guys, including charts. Hey, this is when your entry, uh, that's what the, you know, just to tell you what the crude oil, you can see what the crosshairs, all this stuff is great read. It's great for next year um, as well. And every week, hey, you want to know what's going on in the same page, buy signals, reports, events, earnings, every week, Sunday at your door, better than Barron's in the Wall Street Journal, I promise you. That I promise you. So anyway, with that said, I look forward to servicing you and seeing you guys succeed with me here. I appreciate your time, and thank you very much for your, your, your thoughtful comments tonight. And uh, again, if you want, uh, uh, Bill Lutz says free chocolate basketballs. If you're ever in South Florida, I want you to know that's a Hoffman's basketball. It's a, for the final four. Um, not that I want to get into politics, sex, or religion at the, the, the dinner table, as they say, but um, I gave the neighbor... My friend that gave me that basketball knew that I gave chocolate up for Lent. And, and my birthday was a week before Easter, so this year Easter came early. So he knew I wasn't going to eat the damn thing. So he taunted and teased me and gave me Hoffman's, a three-pound basketball of Hoffman's milk chocolate. Um, any event, uh, enough of that. But anyway, thanks. Um, I don't know about free chocolate basketballs for everyone, but I like your thinking, my friend. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so uh, Scott says, so I'm double nickel. Uh, yes, I'm double nickel. Yes. Uh, Stephen, I've already been, I, I need to go stock up on, on insulin. I, I, I just uh, definitely went overboard on this. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I've eaten every form of chocolate that man has made. Chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate Easter bunny. White chocolate Easter bunny. The only thing I haven't had were the Cadbury eggs, and I got to go find one of those because those are dynamic sugar buzzes. Anyway, everyone, thank you all so much. Y'all have a great evening, and we'll see you on the flip side. And I would strongly, um, Scott Corey West, is that like Nutra West? Because I was kind of Nutra East, my brother. Oh my goodness. Well, did you know me back in the day? I know we know. I know we know people. I know we know people. You've got to know people. We've got peeps we know, I'm sure. The Kirby's. Lived on the corner of Hibbert and Lake Street. Scott Altus passed away no longer with us. Anyway, all right, enough of that. You guys, thank you all very much. There's that link one more time. Sign up if you're into trading stocks and looking at the right sectors. This is uh, some really fabulous stuff. Take care. Good night, everyone. Thank you.